Good afternoon. I will call the meeting of the Trade Independent Library Board to order. Determine our quorum. I will call the names. Um, Dan? Yeah. Um, in front of you have a consent agenda approval. Please add to that the grants that we can sell out these packets. Uh, part of the consent agenda. Right. So we the uh, agenda. Okay. I said I'm, I'm moving, I'm making a motion that we approve the consent agenda. With the addition of the grants. With the addition of the grants. Do I have a second? And I will second. Oh, anybody can second that. I'm not trying to kill me something. Okay. As we move to probably second to approve the set agenda. Thank you. No. No. We may have anybody participating in All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Yeah, eyes have. Director's report. Sure. Thank you so much. I thought today I would share with you our annual report. Let me make it as big as I can up here. So Taylor Humphreys, who's our Humphrey, who's our designer, did a really great job on putting together our annual report from 2023. Thank you. Did it myself? No. <laughs> There's all of you. Um, and I like to always start with our mission, which is that we connect members of our diverse community to learning, resources, culture, and each other. So we'll go through a lot of numbers here that really illustrate some of the ways that we do that. So for 2023, we had 80,000 cardholders. If you consider our population served, which is 170,000 people, that's a really impressive number. Over 700,000 visits to our libraries across the system. Uh, if you take Notre Dame Stadium and fill it 10 times, that's Wow. That's the number of people that we had visit last year. Over 2 million materials checked out. So this number includes both digital and physical materials. Physical materials still account for about 75% of that number. Small city. It is small city. <laughs> Just about 40,000 people attended our programs. And 5 million computer minutes, that's using our computer labs in all locations. And in addition to that, about 825,000 Wi-Fi sessions. So this is people connecting with each other on Facebook or social media or entertaining themselves or hunting for jobs. We see a lot of that. Uh, email connection for a lot of people, social services, rental assistance, all of that stuff is happening on our computers. 5,200 meeting room reservations, again, across the system. And you'll see a little bit later, that works out to about 90,000 people that used our meeting spaces. So we really do see there the impact of the Community Learning Center downtown, although it is spread out across our locations. Almost a half a million minutes learning online through our da databases, Bendable, uh, LinkedIn Learning, all of those resources, and 233 outreach programs. That's about four per week. And you saw in my report that we really see opportunity in the community to expand our outreach services, particularly to senior living facilities, to uh, daycares and preschools. So we're working towards that this year. You know all about South Bend Ready, but here's a, a nice picture of the kids at Maine. 2023, 950 students visited. This year it was just over a thousand <laughs> kindergartners visiting our buildings. This year? This year. That was our February project. This year. Yeah. And then we connect people to the arts. Last year we had both the civic theater 
which did shows in our courtyard and art four, which did shows in our auditorium. Unfortunately, art four is moving themselves to Texas. Yeah, founders are moving. The founders are moving. Closed their doors. So, but at all of these shows, we offer a certain number of tickets to our patrons at no cost. We do work bridging the digital divide in a number of different ways, but this highlights our uh, computer class at La Casa de Amistad, where we teach people how to use computers and when they complete the cat class, they get a little graduation ceremony and they get a, a laptop. Solar power at Tut. <laughs> Just in November and December of last year, we gave out three more than 3,000 free meals through our cultivate food rescue freezer on the second floor at Maine. Can I just ask how many, I know I can divide, but how many a day do we give out? We give out 182 on Monday and Wednesday. And all of those are eaten by like the next morning. So 50 a day on the day we have, or more. Probably like 150 yeah. on the day they deliver. Yeah. Last summer, we worked with the Cast Bay Costume Company, Ellen's department did. We're going to talk about later. She'll, she'll show us more about that later, but they digitize, they use, well, I'll let you talk about that, but that's a really cool thing. She's much better suited to discuss it and show you than I am. Um, one exciting way, I love this program, Spilled Ink Poetry. We had poets as young as five and as old as 85 get up and read their poetry in front of an audience. 150 par 115 participants. Our next one's coming up in April. We'll do it again. We added play spaces to all of our branches. We know that play precedes learning and it's a really important part of early literacy. And all of those spaces are designed intentionally to develop those pre-reading skills. So we bought what is it, 107 sets of toys and play items for the branches. And they get used all the time. So there's our 91,000 people using our meeting rooms for everything from Gibson using it for their staff training days, Everwise I think is in there this week doing the same sort of thing to book clubs, bagpipers, Girl Scouts, 100 Black men, 100 Black women, um, and even six weddings last year. <laughs> yep, the courtyard, yep. <laughs> the ballroom. <laughs> and then we started displaying art. art. We, uh, displayed seven different artists at the main library on the second floor gallery space last year. Again, just providing access to fine arts for everybody, which we also do with the symphony, where we use with the symphony all of the time. So that's a little sum it up of all the things we did last year. And coming up this year, our really two big projects are the I just said it. Outreach, increasing our outreach capacity, and then working on our next chapter, starting with Francis Branch HVAC, which you have in your agenda tonight. I just came from a meeting where they talked about the, the cooking thing on Saturday. I'm not the cooking hour, the, the book fair. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Because I was meeting with the daughter of the book fair on Saturday. They had a great time. I went too. Yeah. Right. Well, then we sat outside, two friends and, and myself, with a cup of coffee in that little hall. I love that 
three hours talking. It <laughs> was so great. The books were great. We had great conversation. That was great. Really? The book, yeah, book come was really fun. Yes. Yeah. And there, my apologies to Roger Perrin. He is a salesman more than a politician, but <laughs> I'm my books. I've already read them. Buy them for your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Check them out at the library. Yeah. That's it. Any questions, Mr. Governor? I have one. Yes. Yes. The um, <clears throat> excuse me. The annual report being digital. That's good. But I do have some associates who are really old, older than me, and I'm sure they're going to ask if they can get a printed copy. Should I just print one off, at, uh, or do we have paper copies? We don't have paper copies. Okay, so I can print. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, will it print well? Now that all the sites do this. No, it'll probably, I mean, it'll, I don't know how the page breaks oh. will work out, but it'll, it'll print. We, I, it just I might feel what they want, I think, if, if, if it's necessary. Yeah. I just wasn't going to do that if there were papers. Yeah, costs. we, this year we decided to do oh, it digital, but it's yeah. not, if, you know, you try to change it up a little every year so that's sure. interesting and engaging. No so. problem with that. We had talked about uh, Ms. Shannon point of view article. Um, and I just, one thing that really struck me was the 80,000 card holders. I mean, that's, that's huge. And so I just like to encourage, I don't know, Stephanie, if you would have your name on it or who, but I, I do think I should um, celebrate the library's success. And we'll do that at, um, our launch party for our next chapter, which is immediately following this month's board meeting. I encourage all of you to attend that and we'll go through a lot of these numbers and talk about what's coming for our branches as well. And all of the elected officials will are being invited to that. Stakeholders across the county will be invited to that, um, as well as the media. If you're getting an email about that, sometimes it is. Probably after this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the 29th after yes. a board. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So Stephanie, I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand. So you're saying that a publication to the Tribune would be after that or connected with that or they will be invited to that? Right, but I meant you want to press the in the Michiana point of view, the you know, the voices section. Oh, okay. Yes. Are you making a note for me? <laughs> we'll get it done. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any other remarks, discussion? Uh, I have a motion to second report. Move to approve. Second. So move to have second to the second records report. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Jay. Hi. A few things to point out. Um, we had some great events in uh, February, which leads to February is usually a really high program attendance month. So we're going to check there. And that's largely because of Science Alive. And then also our graphic humor author. Could you speak up just a little bit? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Our Black and Human author was Michael Platt. So those are some of the photos that are highlighted on the report. Um, also, some of the highlights I pulled out are we had 78 people help with tax returns at Maine Library alone. I didn't have a chance to update. Rhonda sent me the full number. It was like 200 something um, for tax returns that were held in February alone. Um, and oh, Close to 105,000 pieces of paper were printed off for patrons. And I think the impactful part of that is we offer $5 in free printing for people. Because even if it's five cents, 10 cents print, um, a lot of things still require being printed off and then back to print. So that just shows how much people are using that particular service and how it works. Is printing happen? Um, all it happens at main library, at the computer lab, it happens at each of the branches here. Um, 
all of the locations. So. I've used it quite a bit, mm -hmm. as you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So it's, I think looking at that number alone for just one month um, highlights why that is such an important thing that we do. What a reuse of paper. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, the other thing I'm going to point out is our at a glance. I added like arrows that show whether from the previous month numbers are higher or lower, just to give you a little bit of perspective. Um, okay. So even though there are some downward facing arrows, a lot of this is trending from our year end. So circulation tends to decrease in February, probably has something to do with it being a short month um, and the fact that it's cold generally around here and maybe people are off and dark and dark. Yeah, they don't want to go out. Yes, they're all traveling other places for storing. Um, but so nothing, uh, everything kind of was following that track. And even I would say with circulation, it is higher than our average February. So even though we saw a little bit of a dip, it's not um, nothing that we're particularly uh, concerned about. Yeah. Okay. This is a, a really good format in the past. They seem to evolve back way back when we just trying to absorb reams of data on a spreadsheet and mm -hmm. honestly kind of we're afraid to ask a question because <laughs> you didn't know what you missed. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, this is this is good. Thank you. I and I know it's still a lot of information and probably more than anyone can digest, but it's also helpful for us when we look at these things so that we can see where we're doing on the side. Yeah. Much Thank more you. digestible on a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Okay. Um, of course, you all have the reports unless there's something specific on any of them. I always have a little extra. Um, we are still in the midst of the ADP implementation, um, and we have pushed it out, uh, I think, one extra payroll? Uh, two. Two extra payrolls. Um, so, but we're still on track. We just wanted to make sure that our staff is all the way trained through this, this new payroll process. Um, and we just did the manager training. I just did mine at least on Friday. And so um, we've got to really look at it. And I think it'll be a, um, a positive for everybody. Um, right now, um, I actually went to a um, meeting, I guess, conference um, for the public funds management seminar, uh, which had, which was, um, which the Office of Indiana Treasurer of the State and Trust Indiana put on, and I learned a lot. I did not think I would, but I did. <laughs> like, I'm going to go, but I don't think I'm going to learn anything. But I really did. There were some things that even the people, it was for all um, people in my role across governmental units. It was not just for libraries. So there were obviously librarians there, li um, library um, staff there that do what I do, and then also treasurers of the county, those type of things. So some of the things we had already been thinking about from an investment perspective, um, uh, moved me forward to do um, a few things, and we're going to be making a few changes internally about um, some of the things we do. One of the things we are going to um, do some CDs. Um, we have see the a contractual fund, which was from the cluster. Um, and we have some dollars in there that we want to make some um, some investments on. Don't want to put it in Trust Indiana to create another fund. Um, but right now, CD rates are pretty pretty good. We're going to leave them in here about, for about a year, to what, depending on which bank it is, um, 12 months, 13 months, um, uh, to, to capture some more some more dollars on that. So the, in, the interest rate on CDs right now is about between 4.25% and 5 percent 5%. So um, I think we'll get a pretty good return on that, just leaving those in those banks for about a year. Um, also, um, at this meeting, we actually we actually talked about um, the interest rate and what it's going to do with the Fed. And um, they think that it's a 1% chance that the rates will reduce in April, but it's a 75% chance that it's going to reduce in June. So we are in a good spot that we've had it in there this year um, at this five point, whatever it has been over the past year. Um, we will leave it in Trust Indiana, but I think we're in a good space um, that we, we, when we put that in there. Um, so that's the other reason we wanted to move a little bit of that money, get other um, fund money into um, another investment point so we could get some more, some more dollars on that. Um, we also learned a few things. We'll probably be, um, 
moving some of our money into, which is donations and gifts, into another bank account. Um, and the reason is because the Fed, um, they insure up to $250,000, but for um, public funds, the state of Indiana um, insures 200%, so you're basically insured for everything. But if it's commingled funds and donations, if a bank would go under, it will take longer to get all of your money. So we're going to pull the gift funds out of there, put them in a separate account, um, and then leave the government funds there. Still just as fluid, we can still use them as we need to, but we're just going to move that to make, make us a little bit more comfortable with where it is. Um, don't think any of the banks we're in right now are going to go under, but just to be safe. Um, and then we will be, um, with some of the building projects, um, the one that's on the report, we'll be um, paying some things out of work. Uh, which is the library improvement reserve fund um, so that we're not paying everything out of operating. Um, so that we put that money there for a reason. We can use it for buildings. We're going to move it there so that when we come into these projects for the next chapter, we have some some other uh, some other funds to use. Um, and just the good numbers. We have about 20 million in um, the Trust Indiana. We did move some uh, from a cash flow perspective, how to trust Indiana back into operating and work, but that's just because we have to wait for June to get our big deposit from um, property taxes. Just moved a little bit out of there um, just to make sure that we had the cash flow where it needed to be. Any questions? Well, thank you for knowing all those things. <laughs> And going to learn more. Yeah, I think it was very, very informative. I was very happy. I was. Gray had a great view. We were in Cedar. Cedar. Cedar Lake. Cedar Lake. Hmm. Great view on the lake. Oh, yeah. Do we have a motion to accept the patrons report and the financial report? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Move second to accept both the patrons and the report and the financial report. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Getting none? Accepted. The unfinished business. No. Okay. New business. Um, I didn't have to transfer a self-insurance fund to you. Yeah, so if you remember um, last year, we created the self-insurance fund, reserve fund, to ensure that we could have um, we have some uh, insurance funds sitting on the side there. Um, and so we, when we did the budget this year, we ensured that we had budget dollars um, when we did the budget. And so now we need to move that out of the operating fund and put it into the reserve fund. So that's really all that this is, is just moving what we were approved with the budget and putting it into the reserve fund. And just a reminder that our long-term goal with that self-insurance reserve fund is that we don't have to, we've been budgeting, I think, a million a year mm -hmm. for self-insurance. We can reduce that amount that we budget a little bit, depending on what the dollar is that is reserved. So it just helps us budget a little more accurately for our self-insurance. What is our claim experience looking like so far? I can look it up and... It, it's not horrible, obviously. You know, it's, it's not. No, it's, right. not, it's not. It's not. Don't bother. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's un average or below average expenditure yeah. so far this year. Nothing. There's been really nothing. It's really below. It's below. It's yeah. below. Yeah. I mean, there's always been incredibly low in yeah. my past experience. <laughs> I was just going to move that we moved six hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the operating fund to the self insurance reserve fund. Second. Move a second that we move six hundred fifty thousand dollars from the operating fund to the self insurance reserve fund. Uh, all in favor? Well, aye. Aye. Nays. Ayes have it. We need to sign. So, um, uh, we regularly look at all of our job descriptions. I mean, as they open up for, for various reasons, but we try to keep an eye on them um, just to make sure that everything matches what they're actually doing. So, like, we have managers look at the job descriptions during the review process to make sure, okay, yeah, this, this matches up. 
So the same is true for Stephanie. So we added one line, uh, advocate for libraries intellectual freedom, equitable access, and funding at the local, state, and national levels, which is something that she is obviously already doing, um, but we'd like to have it represented on the job description. Um, and then additionally, at this point, Stephanie is very, very active in professional associations, um, but not currently on any nonprofit boards. Um, Deb was never uh, actively on a nonprofit board during the, my time, either, so we thought it would be appropriate to make it an and or situation um, so that it didn't loop her into something that is not really up to her. She has to be asked to, to be on a board, so. I'm happy to serve. Exactly. She was looking to do it. I don't think it can. We shouldn't say that in front of Marvin. <laughs> 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 so if I'm reading this, maintain an active involvement in professional associations and local nonprofit or Yes, but if you then read maintain an active involvement in professional associations or local nonprofit or it sounds like you either do professional or you do local. Right, they could be and it could it's it could so it's and slash or and or so it could be that you're just doing nonprofit mm -hmm. boards and mm -hmm. not the other. Okay, right. Yep. But we thought it was also really important to include that advocacy right. work. Yeah. yeah. So That's... there is particularly should this board make up change, but that is mm -hmm. an expected part mm -hmm. of my job. Right. Yes, exactly. this, right? Yes. The only job description that I will ever bring to you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bring you everybody. Are there any more questions for Karen? If not, I'll attend a motion. So moved. Second. So moved and properly second. Are we accept the new uh, executive director's job description. Um, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Hey. Karen, H bag. I can't wait for this. <laughs> we would like to recommend that the board approve the purchase of a new H bag unit for the Francis branch. Uh, the purchase will not exceed one hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars with funding coming from the LERP. I just love saying that. Well, <laughs> library Improvement Reserve Fund. Um, this project will replace the existing fifty-ton air handler and the outdoor air coolant condenser unit at the Francis branch. branch. Um, that is an older unit that has been having some difficulties over the past few years. It's kind of been on life support for some period of time. It's the one that keeps still up at night. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a single unit. So if it does go out, when Joe asked our dynamic air conditioning people, uh, heating system, it, they said it would probably be about six months. So if it does have our designing guys, there would not be any heater here at that building. So we are kind of actively pushing this through for the infrastructure plan for the 10 year plan. Okay. How, how does, just for my information, how does the bidding process work out? Because it's under $150,000, we just need three quotes. So we have two solid quotes, which is where the 133 comes from. We're waiting for one last quote where we, we think they could get it sooner. And if that comes in under, We'll use that quote instead. It's almost it's not quite here, but we know for sure this is a good quote. And but the lead time is longer, well, four or five months yeah. before we can even get the equipment in. <clears throat> and it might even be fall by the time we get it in. And it will it will, and this will come later, it will require us to close the branch for a little bit while they do the install just to get it in and out. It's a large unit. Any other questions for Karen? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve this. I move that we approve the purchase of a new HVAC unit for Francis branch in an amount purchased, provided if the purchase will not exceed $133,000 with funding coming from the Library Improvement Reserve Fund. 
Second. Okay, and approve the second to the approve the purchase of a base bank with the Francis grants, not to exceed $130,000. All in favor? Aye. 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 Be opposed? Ayes have it. No shot. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things the patrons don't know how grateful that we offer this kind of approval from the board because if they didn't have a new air conditioning unit, boy, would we hear about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the rather than try to that with us. Yes. All right. Um, we recommend that the board approve updates to the computer and network policy and the public services policy manual. Um, changes were made for clarity of language with no substantial change to actual practice or policy. The internet accessible use policy, when patrons log into a public computer, there's an agreement that they have to agree to. Um, the existing internet accessible use policy right now is a generic statement that was provided by the vendor that we use to have people actually log into our computers. We recommend removing this separate policy and replacing it with the current version of the computer and network use policy. And I know that sounds really complicated, but we have two things that pretty much said the exact same thing and we're just combining it into one policy. Well, they didn't actually, just remember the one on the computer didn't actually include the limitations of liability. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna just remove that one, throw it away and have everyone just approve the policy as it's written in the policy manual. And then I did send you the final updates from Myra this morning. Mm -hmm. How many people do the policy? Same as with any other policy. <laughs> but they agree. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie, the uh, note you sent out earlier regarding the uh, uh, what was the term that was used? Object, not objectionable, obscene. Mm -hmm. um, I assume that word then would be the same that we would apply to any other materials. Yes. The, board the, right the legal right. definition of obscenity. Yeah. 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 And that's intentional that we used that I, uh, word. That yeah. might be, but I wanted to be certain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We we'll have a motion to approve the uh, policy for computers and network. I move. Did you move the second that we approve the update the computer network policy and public libraries, public service policy manual? All in favor by aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, done. Any other business? You sent me a note, Dan. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. yes. I did. Yes. Um, do you want me to? Yes. Okay. Um, so the board has been talking about reviewing the uh, evaluation instrument for Stephanie, for the director. And um, so when we went, Marvin and I went to the um, professional development for the Library Association, we got some information. And I was involved in doing some of that work for the school corporation. So I asked Marvin today how we should proceed. And he suggested that I meet with Kara and then bring that to the human resources subcommittee, which is Anne and Nicole. Um, is that correct? Capture yeah. that. Um, so I will set that ball rolling since I seem to have dropped it before. I remember that. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> and did that subcommittee meetings to follow up regular meeting laws? Oh, yeah. 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 So we'll get it advertised and so we can sit in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that. Yes, okay, we're going to take care of that. Do you have any visitors? Okay, this is education. One of my favorite departments. I've been in the federal the history a whole lot. Just a second to share my screen. Yeah, so we had Ellen Anderson from local and family history with us today. 
They do a terrific job. They do a terrific job. If I still she like knows that. all the things. I think right. <laughs> okay. Well, hello. Um, today, as we kind of saw a little preview in the annual report, we're going to talk about a, a recent uh, collaborative project that we've been working on. Um, as the uh, annual report also said, part of the library's mission is to connect our community with resources, and that is what our Michiana Memory Digital Collection is all about. Um, we uh, recently undertook a digitization project in collaboration with the Cassidy Costume Company, uh, which we hope is going to help us serve as a model for future digitization work that we do with partners. Uh, here at Local Family History, we are all about connecting the community with resources by improving discoverability. Um, so many interesting, relevant, useful items are out there, but if you don't know they exist and you can't access them, they might as well not exist. Uh, a lot of the work that we do is trying to create pathways to discover historical materials through indexes, finding aids, guides, and of course, digitization is a huge one. Um, our Michigan Memory Digital Collection, which is 10 years old this spring, uh, is a fantastic resource for discovering historical materials because not only uh, can you discover a wide variety of items through it, but also you can see the items in full right on the spot. You don't have to go hunt it down on microfilm or in a book. Um, we have added a lot of fantastic items over the years, and I inherited a wonderful uh, and, and varied collection uh, when I started here six years ago. Um, but uh, one of the ways that we have recently started making more materials and a wider variety of materials available to the public is through working with partners. Uh, we can't always undertake the ambitious digitization projects that we dream of, like the South Bend Tribune Negative Collection a few years ago. Um, unfortunately, we can't always go to that extent. Uh, but one of the things that we're able to do is um, use, lean on partners to make the most of the resources that we have at our disposal. In fact, um, Michigan Memory has been collaborative since it started. Uh, some of the first collections added to the site were done in collaboration with the Civil Rights Heritage Center in our oral history collection, our Civil Rights and African American History collection, and our LGBTQ collection. Um, that's actually something we're hoping to expand on later this year, and uh, I'll get back to that later. But as I said, we're going to focus on the Cassidy Costume Company today. So let me show you some of the things that came about as part of that um, as a, that project while I tell you about it. Um, costume, Cassidy Costume Company is a nonprofit organization uh, that was founded as part of the school corporation um, independent theater costume rental company um, that operates out of LaSalle. And uh, it, is, it was founded with the costumes that James Lewis Cassidy uh, used in creating beautiful historic uh, drama at uh, Central High School. And um, over the last few years, they've just now begun separating out some of the beautiful historical items that have been rented out of that collection for decades um, and are now kind of being identified as valuable, interesting, um, educational, historical items. But uh, without a museum to display them or the infrastructure to develop their own digital collection, those items are largely hidden from the public. Uh, most people don't know that the costume company exists. They don't know what they have. They don't know why they might be interested in them. So we were really excited to help bring that to our community with a digital collection. So in 2023, we began a collaborative project to represent historical garments with local connections and national significance, primarily in our digital collections. Michigan Memory's strength is providing historical context about life in St. Joe County. And now we were able to bring a new angle to that through fashion and dress, which adds to books and photographs and newspapers that we already have. Uh, when we work with partners, we're not just getting access to their collection materials, but we're also able to share the workload that it takes to bring a project from an idea to a finished product in a way that's mutually beneficial. We're able to expand the variety of materials we share with the community, and the partners able to bring light to their hidden collections. A collaborative project usually begins with a meeting to discuss the scope of the project, the selection criteria, what the workflow is going to look like. 
And then depending on the partner and their capacity, um, we can lean on them to help with tasks like selecting materials, scanning, filling out a metadata spreadsheet. When those raw materials are ready to go, they are handed off to me and I can adjust the format, quality check, and then upload the data in a way that our digital collections website can read and understand. Um, in the case of the Cassidy project, the Cassidy uh, costume company director, Greta Fisher, identified garments of interest in the collection, having extensive knowledge of local businesses and local history, was able to identify things that even when I'm looking at these pictures, I would never have realized were so interesting and had a local tie. Um, the main focus of this round was choosing items that had local shop clothing tags um, or had a known local provenance. Uh, LFH also contributed to this project with the help of six hours a week of a summer intern last summer who worked on photographing items and then researching some of those shops to help fill out the descriptions. Um, and then added the metadata. At the end of the project, I took all of that data and the photographs and I finalized them in a format that Michiana Memory could read and deliver to our patrons. Um, last year was our kind of first experimental round of this work. We added 78 garments and over 200 photographs to the collection. Now that we have a process that we've tested, we're hoping to continue work on this summer with this summer's summer intern uh, to add even more garments to that collection. In addition to a project like this with Cassidy, uh, we're also working on renewing our work with the Civil Rights Heritage Center. Um, over this last few months, we've been working with George Garner there to update some of the materials that we've added in the past to help make them more user-friendly. Some of our oral, his oral histories uh, weren't very clearly described or were broken into parts that were hard to bring together. So we're reuniting those and making them easier to find. Uh, we're also looking ahead to add more materials to the Civil Rights and African American History Collection, to the LGBTQ History Collection, and further down the road, we're even talking about adding a new Latin history collection. Uh, another collaboration, uh, we've been working with uh, some private donors over the years to bring uh, materials that they know are valuable and they're interested in sharing with the public, uh, but aren't quite ready to give up the physical ownership of. Um, so we use this kind of process with them as well. Um, and overall, uh, we're really looking forward to the next few years. The name of the game for us is bringing partners into machine and memory. So we're really looking forward to this project. Nice. Something that I'm just going to recommend that you take pictures of is their wedding gown collection because it is unbelievable. Wedding gowns from decades and decades. Yeah. yeah, they do have some really beautiful dresses in the collection. This is, this is a real memory trigger for my ear, and I grew up in South Bend. My best friend's mother was the buyer for the Francis shop through the 60s, a mm -hmm. long time ago. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I went to high school with the Gilbert girls. <laughs> and so all this clear to me. Yeah. A lot of times, I mean, these days, you go to a store and you buy the clothes and you don't really think about it, but um, most of the garments that we scanned in this or photographed for this collection have both a maker's tag and a store tag. So when the garment came in, they would add a store tag to it to show where it came from. We don't have that kind of provenance in our clothing today, nor will they stick around long enough for it to matter. So, um, yeah, really just interesting for people who are familiar with fashion history to see a little bit of it here. And know that these clothes all came from local people, were worn by local people, were donated to a local organization, and you guys think? Are you working with the History Museum at all? Um, no, we haven't worked closely with them on any projects. They do a lot of their own projects, so we don't have a close digitization working relationship with them, but um, it would be nice to. Uh, question. Are these searchable? So if I wanted to find all the Mulaney shop dresses, I'd be able to do that. You sure can. Um, so one of the great things that Michigan Memory lets us do is um, add descriptions to things, and the descriptions are fully searchable. Uh, we add titles to things. Those are fully searchable. We also use subject headings. Uh, so all of these are clickable and will bring together um, only things that are relevant. For example, if you like hats, you can click here and all the hats are uh, are displayed for you. So 
Um, and then the other thing I want to compliment Ellen on is um, she met with the Clay High School staff to talk about digitizing some of the things when Clay High School closed. So thank you for that. Yes, yes. Looking forward to hearing what comes of their findings as they back up. Right. If you'd have been a family local history, you should go up there. Yes, please. I'm happy to give you a tour. All the new books from back to the deal. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. The next library board meeting is Monday, 29th of April, back at the Public Library Learning Center at 4 15. And followed by our lunch party. Our, uh, yes, yeah. We'll explain our, uh, our 3D glasses. For, uh, so, one week from today is the solar eclipse. Please two believe weeks. two weeks. Is it two weeks? The eight. Oh, it is. The eight. Yes, it's, it's not on the first day. Yeah. That would we'll all be fine that day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Christine. Two weeks from today, do not look at the sun without some official solar eclipse glasses, which you have here, they're NASA approved. Oh, so um, thank you. we'll have a partial eclipse here, but if you go a little bit to our east or to our south, Fort Wayne will have a total solar eclipse mm -hmm. at the southern part of Fort Wayne, and it will go across Indiana, east to west, southern. So Indy's gonna get a full eclipse, Bloomington will get a full eclipse. I think ours is like 96 percent. Now ours is be closed here. Yeah. That's not. That's what I mean. It's still <laughs> still on night. Provided we, it's not closed. Yeah. A friend of mine asked if we could check on hotel rooms. He's from Virginia. Wanted to come see it. Uh, we're going about 600 bucks now. Right. Mm -hmm. In Bloomington. In uh, Indianapolis. Really? Yeah. yeah. It is. Wow. Well, but you can stay a little ways outside yeah. the area and, and drive it. That's yeah. what we did last year. Yeah. All right, we know the business. Marvin. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to give a shout out to Jen um, for those voting posters. So Clay High School students made up some registered vote posters. They had a QR code. And um, I brought them to Jennifer and she printed some, sent them out to the branches, gave me some extras to distribute. So thanks for that. We gotta get people registered to vote. It's really important. Yeah. I need okay. to see this way. Some more news for you. <laughs> thank you for your help. And to the staff also, I do have, I want to say thank you for all that you guys do. Yeah. I'm, I'm having a good time in the library. That's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, yeah. Have to move to adjourn. Yes. Uh, are you in a hurry? Then? <laughs> but then we'll put that up. Oh, it's on to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Is that a second, Christine? Second. Uh, we'll probably.